What's up YouTube? We are back at it again today. And if you watched the last video, then you know we now have a super motor mounted into this beetle. So what I'm going to be showing you today is everything else that we need to eventually get this car running. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the content of this video will be, so bear with me. Um, obviously we'll figure out by the end of it. But I know we're going to need to do an intake manifold. We're going to need to run coolant lines. We're going to need to run our fuel lines with our new fuel filters and our external fuel pump. We're going to need to mock up the turbo placement, which is going to be a little fun. Figure out where our oil drain is going to be for the turbo. Uh, yeah, there's just a real lot to do in this video. So tune in and let's see how it goes. So this is going to be a collection of a lot of just kind of random bits and pieces that I need to do before I can have the motor running. Um, and one of them is resolving the PCV system um, using the Impreza heads with the WRX short block. We actually had an extra crankcase vent. So what I've done already is remove the port here. And these are the balance tubes on a WRX. It would have additional ports on the heads and essentially just balance the pressure between the crankcase and the heads. Um, in my instance, I'm actually going to yank this so that I can fit the Impreza coolant crossover, which I'll show you guys in a little bit. And I'm going to replace this port, hopefully, with a freeze plug, which I am somewhat hesitant about. But yeah, you guys can watch me try and you can either learn from my mistakes or my victories. Alright, and I still have some Fuji Bond left over. It's the uh, Impreza sealant, or I should say Subaru. But I'm going to try to get a little bit on this thing, on this freeze plug. And hopefully, unless this is completely jammed. So this is a little clogged up, so we're in this a little of a different way than probably what anyone would suggest. And the key with this is to be very, very gentle, because I do not want to end up fishing this out of the oil pan or... or God knows what else would happen. Let's zoom in just a little bit here. I think that works out pretty well. I'm going to show you how. Um, if you want to use a turbo up pipe with single overhead cam heads from Subaru, uh, there's a small tab on the heads that actually needs to be ground down. Let me just show you the tab real quick. So it's a little hard to see. It's actually this little piece right here. It needs to be ground down so that the up pipe won't hit it. So we got what we need to trim down here to get the clearance. It's very, very tight, but there is clearance. And now, well, the turbo would go here, but it looks like we're going to have to do some more cutting. We'll get into that next. So we're ready to put the cold crossover on. I'm just gonna give it a quick scuff with this to make sure there's nothing stuck to it. Just gonna add our O-rings. 
across of a tube. Let me pop this bad boy on. So now that we get it mocked up, we're gonna actually take the fuel rails off, clean up the intake manifold, and um, we're gonna do a little trimming, refitting of the lines, and also replace the fuel injectors with some that have been tested from uh, Dutch Works, Deutsch Works. So I wasn't originally planning on this, but now that I'm looking at the fuel rails, I think what I might try is, so this fuel rail goes here, um, as so, and I was planning on trimming it right here. So basically I'd have both sides of it just going straight out. I have an extra set of fuel rails, and now I'm thinking what I can do is actually take this one this use this side this piece for both sides and actually because this will be cut it shouldn't really matter basically we get the same two you can put an out going that way I, I think it makes a lot of sense so i'm going to go for it and basically i'll just cut i'll just cut this with a tube cutter and add a flare like this one and we should be good to watch for that. And now we're actually gonna modify this fuel rail. And this isn't something I've done before, but looking at the problem at hand, it seems like the best thing to do. So we'll cut it around here and we'll add a flare similar to this one using our master cool flaring tool. Now to make it a little more clear, see now that we've trimmed this line, we can actually have, we essentially have the two going like this, and that's, what's nice is I realize I can actually take this and use a second one and go like that. And we'll basically have really nice clean parallel fuel rail mod. So I'll get on the second one now, you can see the I show this was a little hard. I crimped the end here. I'm gonna try a different crimp on the other one and then decide which one I like best for the final. 
All right, so our next step is going to be getting the new fuel injectors into these modified fuel rails. So now what we'll do is using the lubricant, we will lube up this guy, put him in there, use the clips to hold them in place. And then we'll put the actual injector on the rail. Oh, sorry, into the intake manifold after. So let's see here. I believe what you want to do is just bottom these out and then we will take our clips and that was a little tricky but you can see here we have the clips on see our little retaining clips on both sides so now we can move on to the other rail All right, so now we're gonna put the fuel injectors and fuel rails on the intake manifold. And this should be pretty easy because it's actually gonna be the same thing on both sides now. Alright, now let's get this intake manifold on here. So we got the throttle body all cleaned up and I was just going through the gaskets because here's a throttle body for you. Really just clean the inside to get any gunk out. But so the Felpro kit actually comes with three different gaskets and uh, just based on us using the IACV, the uh, idle air control valve, I believe we're going to go with this one. All right, like that. And that will be our gasket. This port is for. It's a lot of funny stuff going on here, but this is the only one that doesn't cover the the valve, so it must be the right one.
So the last thing to show everyone before kind of calling it for this video, because I'm still waiting for quite a few parts for the fuel system, the coolant system, and the turbo oiling system. Uh, but the last thing I want to show you guys was this really nice alternator relocation bracket from out front motorsports. And what this does is it allows me to move the alternator, which would usually be right around here. It allows me to put it on this side because I no longer have AC or power steering. Um, it's just a much cleaner look, and it also gives you the potential to actually uh, 180 the intake manifold if you so desire. So other than that, uh, we also got the crank sensor on, which you can see right here. This guy right there. And we also have the cam sensor, which you can see right down here. I have a knock sensor, but it's not yet installed. Uh, I'm also waiting on a fuel and both fuel and oil pressure sensors um, so I can log those through my mega squirt. So what we have planned for the next few videos is the fuel plumbing, which include, includes installing a fuel cell in the trunk, running AN braided lines from the trunk to the rear where the motor is, uh, installing the external fuel pump and the pre and post fuel pump filters. And we will also have footage for the turbo drain. Uh, I'll have to weld in a bung there on the oil pan. We'll use AM lines for that as well. And otherwise, it's the cool one. And then we go to wiring. And from wiring, we can actually hear this bad boy fire up. So as always, thank you for tuning in. I really want to take this time to thank everyone for the support. We're up to 50 subscribers, and that is huge. Um, so just going to leave it short and sweet. I really appreciate everyone supporting you. Please continue to leave feedback in the comments. If you like what you see, hit the like button, and if you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe to the channel.